quickly before we get into the bulk of today's exploration, really just an exploration of China and Turkey, I wanted to show this photo of Shanghai. And here we have the same impressive architecture that is found all throughout and clearly inherited even in Shanghai. This resembling nothing that we are led to believe about the historical narrative of China. And with that said, let us begin our presentation. Welcome! And this week I'm going to be a little short on time, so I thought I'd make a little video so that I can present something to you next Sunday. I have some of it completed, and it will be touching on the subject of China in the early 1900s and Turkey. Turkey going way, way back. And I'll share my opinion and also the opinion of the New Earth Channel when it comes to the subject of Turkey. But before we get into that, I just wanted to show you this StolenHistory.org post. And they were talking about the Great Fires. And we've done a lot of looking at pictures of fires all over the place, all throughout this realm. And one excellent thing that he shows here is the similarities between them all. Posing many great questions, was this an internal war? Was it an outside attack? And here we have 13 main points showcasing these anomalies. Devastating damage done to the brick and mortar and the concrete buildings. Lack of distinctive fire signature on the collapsed structures. Presence of the bizarre diagonal wall cuts. Trees and wooden utility poles did not really burn. And let's have a little look at some of these examples. Here are the images many of you are familiar with. And after my last video, I'm not really sure what I can and can't show. But we'll just have a little go at it. The presence of bizarre diagonal wall cuts. I'm sure you've seen this. And if it was just a fire, why wouldn't it just blast it all down? Why cut at an angle in this fashion? And we see this all throughout. Trees and utility poles not really burning, as we can see here. Always trees right in the middle of these burn areas, very similar to what we see in California. And a insignificant level of loss of human life is not present. So here we go. We see destruction like this, and then 51 perish, 76, 3, just ridiculous. And the posing of pictures, really the past just seeming like a big photo op. These people not seeming to have anything to do with the construction of these photos, and just conveniently posing upon inheriting them. Lack of photographic evidence of the cleanup activities, very good point. Super fast rebuilding activities. Lack of photographic evidence of the rebuilding activities. Non-researchable dead-end appointed architects. And many of these architects are just ghosts. Oftentimes uh, reading about them only to discover that there is no trace of them in any other articles. And of course the bizarre fire initiating stories. A cow knocking over a candle and burning the whole city of Chicago down in 1871, for example. In Seattle, some water spilt on glue, sparks from the chimney, destroys half the city. And some interesting points. And if anyone is still not convinced of the anomalies associated with these fires, I recommend you have a go at trying to answer some of these questions. And here was a picture I showed in my last video. I had some comments about where this was, and this was supposed to be a proposed building in New York City that was going to be the highest structure raised by man, outdoing the Eiffel Tower, as seen in this picture. And this was to be at Coney Island, 
And we can see here behind the Eiffel Tower is seen the Freed Globe Tower, an amusement enterprise now being erected at Coney Island, which is planned to attain a height of 700 feet. Not really sure, I don't think that's quite the highest structure. But nevertheless, at Coney Island, so many anomalies associated with this amusement park, which was pretty much all torn down. And here was a picture of the JFK Stadium in Philadelphia, which was said to be torn down after the Live Aid Festival, or Farm Aid, I'm not sure what it was, in the 80s. And here's a little look, really just seeming like an old coliseum and what looks like uh, some pretty amazing structures back here. Perhaps the site of a future World's Fair, I'm not sure. And here real quick, we have an image from 1935. And let's play Where Are We? Where is this city in 1935? Bustling, bridges, beautiful monuments with fashies and amazing antiquitech. I don't know what I would have guessed with this one. Hard to see the people. And from what we can see, seeming very in line with the fashion of what we know as 1935. And this is China. China in 1935. And the exact city is Shanghai. The Bund. Perhaps this is a district. In Shanghai in 1935. And not what anybody would probably imagine. Not a single clue that we're in China here. Not one. No pagoda. Not even a Chinese hat. And in today's modern narrative, we're led to believe that China is an up-and-coming country. People leaving the rural areas in droves to start new lives in the city and yet in 1935 seeming like they were already there doing just fine same building style found all throughout this plane and just as impressive and here again a little look at China and in this particular picture absolutely seeming like inheritors and this is not supposed to be a canal. This is a great flood of something. And again, we get a good close-up at the amazing Greco-Roman style architecture. Just absolutely mind-blowing and intricate. And just like we do, we slap some cheap signage over the doorway. And there you go. We satisfy the masses, and an inheritance is achieved. No questions asked. Primitive people, advanced city, and architecture. And what I was searching for was China Ice Cities, as I briefly featured in a past video. And that's when this image popped up. Very interesting. Sometimes I wonder if the AI is tipping me off because these ice cities really seeming to boast this old world style. Very interesting. As if perhaps the cities had been here and in some pictures seeming more so than others. But very interesting. I'm really not sure what to make of them. Some parts seeming not to be made of ice, as we can see back here. And is this just a cover-up? An ice cover-up. And if it is a complete creation, then they have replicated the amusement parks of the old world. And pretty impressive. Whereas in recent days, we seldom see the replication of the old world and its architecture. And here in a 
ice fashion, we see an amazing display. But somebody understands this. In the heart of former Tartarian country. Pretty impressive. And I'd really like to look into the builders and maybe watch this being built, if possible. Really just thought-provoking, and I thought I would share it for now. Something to explore in a little more depth in a future video. Here I'm trying to upload this video for the third time. First time it was hit by copyrights. Second time hit by inappropriate content for most users. And finally, I'm just going to upload it anyway. This means that they'll be limited to no ads, as is the case in several of my videos. And I show a little quick snippet of this at the beginning of this particular video that I'm currently uploading. And I have a whole bunch of open tabs up here, and I've been wanting to make a video about it. And it's probably not a good idea while this is uploading, but I don't care. It's been a very frustrating week, what feels like forever. And at this very moment, I require some sort of distraction. And today's distraction from my life will take us to Anatolia, Turkey. So here we have Anatolia, also known as Asia Minor, Asian Turkey, and it is a large peninsula in West Asia. It makes up the majority of modern-day Turkey. The largest city is Istanbul, with a population of 15 million. Some populous groups include Turks, Kurds, Armenians, Greeks, Arabs, etc. And here at a glance, simply by doing a little search, we see how impressive Turkey is. And I remember watching a New Earth video, and she was saying that if there was a capital for a lost people that constructed architecture in the Greco-Roman style, then the capital of these people would be Turkey, and not Greece. The ruins in Turkey are much more massive and impressive than anything seen in Greece and really a mind-blowing exploration. I was really fascinated and hadn't realized that many sites that have interested me were actually found all throughout Turkey. Some of the most advanced and beautiful ruins from the past. And just based on these images and the variety of sites, one could spend a lifetime exploring Turkey. And most of these sites, completely abandoned and long forgotten and seldom explored. And again, not sure where I was going. Even at a quick glance, we can see that we're dealing with truly something older than most of the ruins found in the world, but of the same style, the same people. And here's a little look at the ruins of the city of Ani, Turkey. And this is a monastery, they're telling us, thought to have been built between 1000 and 1200 AD. And as I've mentioned before, it just seems like the older the ruins, the more advanced. And the more the ability to weather time. And this is absolutely intricate, seeming to be built of junk stone with a facade applied over the top. And here we get a good look at that. And the facade, the beautiful facade and intricacies have crumbled off revealing the original construction which seems to be stone. And I'll show some other pictures that will depict this a little more clearly. And here again, this is Ruins of a mausoleum of the child princes in the citadel in Ami. The child princes, I mean, just ridiculous. Thought to have been built around 1050 AD. 
And this one was just really fascinating. Just the scattering and destruction that took place here is amazing. It also seems to be flooded out. Clearly these were entryways at one point. Mostly buried, mostly destroyed. However, we can see what looks like a beautiful concrete face over the top of this stone. And this is a very beautiful concrete. If you've ever worked with concrete, this is not only a beautiful color, but a perfect finish. And even seeming to have what looks like pockmarks, which would occur in concrete from air bubbles. As always, I'm not sure, but seems to be very telling and a beautiful ruin. And here again, similar to the first one we looked at, and a peek at the inside. Just super intricate. Told by the experts, it was built in 1000 AD. And here you go. Absolutely amazing. Seeming like cast concrete fit like a glove, almost seamless, and if their story is true, holding up much better than anything we could construct today. And here a little look from a broader vantage point, and at a distance not seeming that impressive, but as you just saw, absolutely masterful. And here are seeming to be people along this trail, just to give us a idea of how massive these actually are out here in the fields. And here a medieval wall in the city of Ani. Looking like this side held up a lot better than this side. Perhaps a great force came in from one direction. And the cathedral on the Turkey-Armenian border. Again, super impressive seeming to have a stone core with a beautiful facade and a little look at the base and the stone underneath the missing chunk of facade here and here's some carving and I don't care what time period they tell us this carving is from this is an advanced carving to be able to just keep writing through the seam, unbothered, unwavering, beautiful writing, as if it was done by a computer with some modern computerized engraving technique, not seeming to be chiseled by hand. And here, a little look at the inside of the, oh, forgive me, the church of St. Gregory. And if this is as old as they're telling us, really amazing. Here are the remains of a church. Is it buried? Not sure. And here are the remains of an ancient bridge. Again, from uh, 1000 AD to 1500 AD and building these amazing stone bridges with facades. And here we can see the facade has peeled away revealing the stone and how massive no messing around with the quality of brick and craftsmanship and lastly i just wanted to show you some of sub photonics channel and recently he's been talking a lot about buildings being melted and a lot of people have criticized this work naturally and here I think he showed some excellent photographic examples of melting brick and what it may look like. And here's one, and my favorite one is this one right here. And here you can see the ceiling, a brick ceiling, and what appears to be melting. So where did the heat come from? Where this is uh, the inside of a cave, and forgive me, I mean, not a cave at all. And yet, having the appearance of a cave, if it was any more weathered, it may seem natural. And I'm not sure exactly where this is. And here, an exterior look at what brick looks like 
when it's been put through some sort of hell. And we're baffled enough researching who the builders were, how they built it, and this is another question altogether. What kind of force, be it natural or artificial, renders brick and mortar to this state? And this will be something to continue exploring. But since it is completely new to me, I thought I would share it with you as well. So that's it for today. I do hope you enjoyed, and do have a blessed day. And please like, comment, and subscribe.